Now, children, I'm going to present the certificates. Congratulations, Albert. Back in 1880, Sunday school would have looked a bit like this. Congratulations, Ellen. Hold your certificate for the class to see. Nowadays, things are a little less formal, but the message remains the same. For over 200 years, Sunday schools have brought children together to give them the good news that Jesus loves them. And so on this week's Songs of Praise, I shall be looking at how this national movement has shaped generations of young people. We hear how gangs of unruly children led to the establishment of an institution that's cherished by millions. I've still got my certificate for good attendance. Bill Kenwright explains Everton Football Club's link with Sunday School. You go to any Evertonian, they'll all know. And music from our junior and senior school choirs of the year. For me and millions like me, Sunday afternoon meant one thing, Sunday School. When I came home from Sunday School after my very first visit, Mum said, what was it like? I said, yeah, it was fine. She asked what we did. I said, we sang a song about a bear. She said, what? I said, yeah, we sang a song about a bear with cross eyes. When she asked me what it was called, I told her, gladly, the cross-eyed bear. Turned out it was actually a line from a hymn by Fanny Crosby. But some of the hymns that I learned in those days have stayed with me ever since. And our first hymn today is a Sunday school favourite that has become a favourite of each successive generation that's discovered it. where and when the first Sunday school was held, but by the second half of the 1700s, various people were teaching children either in their homes or in churches. But it wasn't until this man, Robert Rakes, began his Sunday school in 1780 that a national movement started. Robert Rakes was a Gloucester publisher, newspaper owner. The story goes, according to Rakes, that he was working in his study on a Sunday afternoon and he was disturbed by the noise of boys outside uh, playing in the street. And he wondered why they were doing that and realised it was a Sunday. At the time, very few children received an education. Most of them had to work. Children would very often start work, maybe as young as five, and children in the mines and the potteries, you know, they're 18-hour days, so, and that was six days a week. So Sundays were the only day that they had off. So Rakes had the idea to set up a school for them. 
During the course of the day, they would have done some reading practice, possibly a little writing. They would have then have gone to church for the afternoon and then come to do the catechism class after church. So in that way, rakes had kept them off the street for most of the day. <laughs> the women who taught in the schools also benefited. This was enormously empowering because women at that time had no access to any sort of higher education, career prospects, and uh, women really were able to use their skills in leadership in a way that there was no other area of life that they could do that. Rakes published an article in his journal that spread the idea to other towns and cities, but studying on a Sunday caused some controversy. There were Christians who thought that on the Sabbath you shouldn't work, and learning writing, and certainly learning arithmetic, smacked too much of work on the Sabbath. So this was a controversy amongst the early founders of Sunday schools. And there weren't just worries about breaking the Sabbath. The propertied classes were, some of them, worried that if people learnt to read, the poor learnt to read, they might read radical pamphlets and they weren't happy at all about the poor having uncensored access to the Bible and discovering that God was on the side of the poor. And so reading the Bible themselves was about discovering good news for the poor. By the mid-19th century, 1.4 million children went to Sunday school. They were the centre of community life and each one would have its own impressive banner. What's fascinating is the images on them. Um, you'll notice that one there has got a lighthouse. So that's a very common image because it's about saving children. That fellow looks a bit angry, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. Yeah, that training child up in the way it should go is, mm. is from the writings of St Paul, I think. I think, actually, it's probably modelled on the actual Sunday school superintendent. He looks like a Victorian gentleman. You just imagine the children, if that's looking from the wall down at you, and you think, you'd be very good. Uh, how did the banners come about? The banners are very much like the logos of their day. They were setting what the Sunday school stands for. And then, of course, the real purpose was for taking outside the Sunday school to march. And you'd all march behind your banner. When? When would the marches happen? It could be Sunday school anniversary, but the big ones were the wit walks. These events were the highlight of the year and brought the streets to a standstill. 
And it wasn't just young children who would attend Sunday school. This is uh, extracts from soldiers' letters. This, you notice the date is 1917. This is First World War. That's right. And wow. it's at a time when this church is having the Sunday school anniversary. Mm -hmm. And all these young men who are actually part of the Sunday school have written letters because they can't be there. It's really quite moving. And like this chap here, yeah. Jay Partington, and he says, I'm proud to say that it is the good teachings I've received there that have been my greatest help in times of danger and temptation. Yes, yeah, Sunday school was all about praising children as well and dignifying them, wasn't it? And very much in encouraging them, so you got medals for regular attendance. It was yeah. about belonging, it was where you met your friends, it was where the, you had social activities, annual sports, a public tea. This is children's treat. Exactly. So this is the outing. You can see here they're going in wagons. Wagons will leave the hillside chapel. And the children's treat would perhaps be the only chance they ever got to go outside their community. And of course music was so important. The songs were such a part of Sunday school. Here's a hymn and tune book. And it's tonic sulfur. It's like, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Yes. You see, they wouldn't have had an instrument necessarily, so they had to use their voices. So, so, mi, mi, re, mi, so, so. Haha, <laughs> we know that one. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Oh. 